Hi guys, this is Hazel. So in today's video sharing, I decided to talk about why I don't use P ratio purely to determine when exactly I buy a stock or enter a market. Because I understand that it's actually quite common to uh, hear people or see uh, content sharing about how to use P ratio to see whether it's high or low to determine when to buy a stock or when to enter a market. So for people who are investing, I think uh, you should be familiar with this financial ratio, price to earnings. It is actually quite a straightforward ratio to understand. But for the benefit of those who do not know, uh, it is computed by taking the current share price divided by the earnings per share. So if you look at the formula mathematically and logically, uh, what it means is to actually help us to see whether our purchases is value for money. So what does this mean in theory? So, okay, in theory, it means to say for our purchase to be value for money, the P ratio has to be one or less. But let's take a look at good companies like Nike or Procter & Gamble. Do we see good companies like that having a P ratio of one or less or anywhere near one? We don't see that. And that's because most market participants do not act rationally when they are making their investing decisions. And that's why prices can get pushed up because of emotions like greed or fear of missing out. Then there's another school of thoughts which is to compare the P ratio of a company historically or against uh, the industry average. So in my opinion, this is a more reasonable and workable approach as compared to using a PE ratio of one or less. But even then, I do not purely use P ratio to determine when I want to buy a stock or when to enter the market. So let me share with you the reason why. P ratio can be used as a quick and broad indicator to help us look at the broad direction of a stock or of the market. But it cannot be used as a precise indicator to help me see when I should buy a stock. It is a lagging indicator. By the time I have all the data for the past 12 months, the stock price may have already changed, which is why it does not help me to give me a precise point to enter the market. To give you an example, let's take a look at DBS. Usually for companies like banks that have more traditional business models, we can also look at the PB ratio. So PB ratio works very similarly to PE, except that we use the book value instead of earnings to compute. So based on the data, we can see that in 2020, the PB ratio for DBS is 1.1, which is considered towards the lower range for the last five years. So that makes it seem like a good buy now. And based on data from Google Focus, 1.1 is also below the median of 1.2. So on the first shading day of 2021, let's say I'm intending to buy DBS shares, and I started researching on DBS, and I happen to see the DBS annual report showing that the PB ratio is 1.1, which seems like a very good valuation to buy in now. So I may have entered a position of DBS at that point in time when I see that the PB ratio is just 1.1. But let's take a look now at the price chart for DBS. We can see that the stock price has already recovered to the pre-COVID levels, and the outside potential is no longer as attractive. In fact, the best time to buy DBS should have been in 2020 during the crash. But because ratios like PE and PB are lagging indicators, they only provide a broad overview but do not give us a very precise entry point for investors. Then let's take a look at PE ratio. PE ratio seems to be high for 2020. So when investors see such conflicting PE and PB numbers, should they buy or not buy? Now, you may see that some financial websites publish PE ratios with the numbers changing daily. So why is this though? That's because they are using the current share price divided by the earnings over the last four reported quarters. So does it still make sense now? Well, I'm not too sure because what we are seeing now is using the current share price but taking into account over the past earnings and not the current earnings. Which is why again, I only use 
ratios like P ratio or PB ratio to give me a very general sense of the broad direction and the valuation of the stock or of the market. But it doesn't determine whether I'm going to execute a trade, whether I'm going to buy a stock today, tomorrow or the week after. And the example that I just gave is for a cyclical company. So what about a company that is, that is non-cyclical like say for example McDonald's? We can see that for McDonald's, the P ratio is steadily increasing over the years. So does that mean that we will never get a chance to buy McDonald's stocks? By now, you'll be asking me, so what tools do I use then? To determine whether to enter or to even exit a stock or a market, the first thing is to first look at the trend of the stock or of the market. So like in the case for McDonald's, it is a long-term upward trend. And we can see that the blue 50 moving average is a good support for McDonald's on the weekly charts. Therefore, a possible entry is when the prices hit the 50 moving average again. So what I've just shared is based on statistics and probabilities exhibited by the historical prices of McDonald's. And this is only just one of the statistical tools that I use to help me determine a precise point as to when to buy a stock. Such statistical tools are more precise than the PE or even PB ratio because they are a result of taking into consideration the daily sentiments and traits of the stock market participants. You can then make more informed and timely decisions based on these indicators. Many investors are afraid of learning more of such tools because they seem complicated. At first glance, they may seem scary because that's how I felt when I first started learning as well. But over time, and trust me, it doesn't take long, it became a fun thing to do. So to wrap up, for financial ratios like PE and PB ratios, I only use them to give me a general understanding of the general direction of the prices of the market or of the stock. In order to determine the precise entry point or even exit point, I will look at statistical indicators and tools to help me determine when to enter and as well as when to exit. So hope you learned something new from this sharing today.